secret trysts, tangled love triangles, and dirty laundry room hookups. Whether they're hot chefs, sexy bosuns, or flirty stews, these ship-shaped co-stars are all getting busy below deck. When you have a crew that looks like this, it's only a matter of time before they start breeding like a bunch of rabbits in heat. The first official below-deck romance is the Season 3 relationship between Rocky and Eddie. The two met on board Eros, where they shacked up multiple times. Rocky admitted on the show, It was three times in the laundry room, one time in the restroom, and we kept it under the wraps, and we were totally no. under the radar. Yep. Though they managed to initially keep it confidential, production quickly caught on to their extracurricular activities. Thanks to that, cameras were installed in all future laundry rooms on series yachts. As Kate Chastain told The Daily Dish, They ruined it for everyone. That's why we can't have nice things, Eddie and Rocky. Eddie had a girlfriend back home during the season, and his conscience got the best of him. His feelings towards Rocky turned sour, and he ghosted her, causing Rocky to lash out and spill their romantic tea to the rest of the crew. Eddie claimed his season three regrets caused him to take a five-year hiatus from the show, returning again for season eight and nine. In 2021, he told Showbiz Cheat Sheet, I felt like I had learned a lot over the past five years from the mistakes I've made. One of the show's sweeter romances was between Chef Ben and Stu Emily during season four. As Emily told Life After Bravo, I felt very close to him very quickly. He was British and he made me laugh and I do like an older guy. Viewers saw Ben fall head over heels for his coworker, even leaving flowers in her bunk. It was a real relationship for me. It was quite nice, I just happened to have been there on TV. Their romance continued on land as well, with Ben confirming to The Daily Dish that they were still going strong in December 2016. But the chef revealed on Kate Chastain's After Deck podcast that they had called it quits by October 2017. He said, I can't exactly exclaim that we're steady and dating at this point in time. We just don't see each other enough to have a serious relationship. But it seems they have remained friendly ever since. As Ben told People in 2019, she does fly out to see me, and I saw her in London a few months ago. Malia has had her fair show of romances on board, but none were as dramatic as her love triangle with Wes and chef Adam Glick on Below Deck Mediterranean Season 2. At the time, Malia was a green deckhand, with Adam telling Bravo, So every single one of us was into her, except for Max Hagley, who had a girlfriend. Everyone was vying for Malia. The drama came to a head during their season when Adam developed feelings for Malia before filming began. But while they did kiss, Malia claimed they were on separate wavelengths. She told The Daily Dish, He was latching onto something that wasn't actually there. Adam eventually confronted Wes after he saw him and Malia getting cozy. Malia ultimately chose Wes, and the two attempted to make it work after season two wrapped. Though they were seen together on Instagram throughout 2017, they ultimately split. Malia told the outlet, We're still good friends. He keeps me updated with his travels, and I tell him about mine. Cast members Danny and Jean-Luc started hooking up after a game of Truth or Dare on board Parsifal 3 on Below Deck Sailing Yacht Season 2. They got closer as the season went on, but Danny struggled with the fact that Jean-Luc was much younger and possibly not ready to commit. She even famously said, The more I get to know you, I like you more. Let's have sex tonight. Anything you pray to, that's God's will. Well, it was God's will, apparently. Danny revealed in April 2021 that she was expecting her first child. Fans immediately questioned whether Jean-Luc was really the baby daddy. And as Danny admitted at the season two reunion, He thinks it's not his child, and he doesn't want it to have anything to do with it. Jean-Luc ultimately accepted the results of a paternity test, writing on Instagram, An international DNA test that was done a while ago was no small feat. I'm happy and proud to say sweet and beautiful Lily Rose is my daughter. He has yet to post any photos of his daughter Lily. Bosun Gary definitely knows a thing or two about fleeting romances that blow up in his face. That's exactly what happened in season two of Below Deck Sailing Yacht when he hooked up with his deckhand Sydney and then proceeded to date one of the stews, Ali. Sydney got jealous and was ultimately cast aside after her night in the guest cabin with Gary and proceeded to lash out at Ali throughout the season. Though the damage between Ali and Sydney seemed to be too deep for repair, Ali later told The Daily Dish, Gary had a girlfriend when he came on board and Sydney slept with him a long-term girlfriend. Gary explained that he ultimately came clean to his girlfriend back home, but as for his feelings for Ali, it wasn't meant to be. He shared at the reunion, It was inevitable that she was always leaving to Australia, so I think in both of our minds, in the back of our minds, we knew it could never seriously work because of that. Jessica and Robert's relationship burned out in a flash. Their season five below deck Mediterranean romance involved bouts of jealousy when Jessica accused new Stu, Aisha Scott, of grabbing Robert's butt during a group photo. The two ended up making it work throughout the season, but ultimately called it quits after Bali. Jessica told Bravo, 
It was definitely a roller coaster with him, you know. Explaining that they essentially saw each other 24-7 for roughly six months, she noted that their connection wasn't always a warm one. I've never felt that sort of affection and attention and love and then also the polar opposite. Robert admitted they were each other's downfall, adding, I understood it, how to like hurt each other, and like ultimately at the end, like we both destroyed the relationship. Jessica went on to welcome her first child, Charlie, in 2022. And no, Robert isn't the father. Elizabeth and James seemed to be on two separate pages during season eight of Below Deck. Elizabeth fell hard for the deckhand's charm, and the two even spent the night together in the off-limits guest cabin. Noting that he's still glad they did it, James recalled during the reunion, I, I knew yeah. we were going to get in trouble, but it was just balancing out the risk and the reward. Elizabeth thought the rendezvous deserved a conversation about where their romance was going, but James dodged her advances. I'm not trying to like come and move in with you or something, but... Explaining that she would be down for a jet-setting adventure with someone, hint hint, she didn't quite get the response she hoped for. That's just kind of how I roll. Talking about feelings and shit makes me want to just jump off a cliff. Though their relationship ended on board, the two did get a sympathy nod from series alum Kate Chastain, who tweeted, I seriously can't even count how many times I've slept in a guest cabin. Gary King was the object of almost all the female affection on board Parsifal 3 during season 3 of Sailing Yacht, but Ashley sure wasn't going down without a fight. After Gabriella Berrigan joked that Gary wasn't good enough for anyone on the charter, he clapped back. We're all way out of your league. I know you are. <laughs> so don't kiss me again. And that prompted Ashley to ask if all the ladies on board had kissed Gary, which was true, all except for deckhand Kelsey Golia. Ashley admitted on the show, This whole Gabriella Gary situation is frustrating. Like, I could have Gary already. I could have done it already. After Scarlett Bentley replaced Gabriella, Ashley lost the fight. Although Gary and Ashley shared a drunken hookup, he quickly moved on to make out with Scarlett in the pantry. When the love triangle began expanding into other shapes, Chief Stew Daisy Kelleher gave us the famous line. I am trying to teach the women to be a team. And of course, Gary and his small d ruin everything. Aisha and Jack seem like a match made in heaven on Below Deck Mediterranean season four. As Aisha told Page Six, it, it was a fun time and I don't regret it, you know, like he made the se doing that season that much more fun and I loved his company. But their romance quickly died out when the two tried to make it work on land. Aisha found out through Jack's sometimes girlfriend Kelly that the two were back together when Kelly DM'd her to stop messaging Jack. Aisha explained to Andy Cohen, And I'm like, what the f he's my boyfriend? <laughs> he is a young boy at heart and he just freaked out and ran home and ran to what he was familiar with. Jack had a baby with Kelly, and while the two appeared to not be in a relationship, he also later patched things up with Aisha, who has moved on herself. Aisha told The Daily Dish, I just decided to leave it there and put it in the past because at the end of the day, we actually did have a really good friendship. There's nothing like a hookup between the chief stew and the chef. And Jenna and Adam served it up piping hot on season one of Below Deck Sailing Yacht. They also had no problem with piling on the PDA, much to the dismay of their fellow crew members. Jenna shared on the final word. I would go in in the morning and give him a kiss and no one was there. Or, you know, I'd be doing whatever in the galley or in the crew mess and he'd come over and give me a hug. Claiming that they only got up in each other's business when she was off the clock, it still didn't seem to be low-key enough for everyone else. Some people can have a problem with that. I get it. Um, but I'm also not working. Though things seemed to ice over when Adam didn't react well to Jenna expressing her love, the two did see each other after the season ended. The couple revealed during the reunion that they traveled through Greece and visited each other's families. But the spotlight proved to be too much for a real romance. When asked if they would get back together, Jenna blamed Adam for putting up walls, noting, You can escape intimacy and, you know, an actual connection with somebody. That's what I believe anyway. Paget and Sierra met in 2016, before they appeared on season one of Below Deck Sailing Yacht in 2020. The pair seemed to weather any storm that came their way, even flirting allegations on Paget's part. The pair went on to get engaged after the show, but called it quits just nine months later. Sierra explained to Us Weekly, There were a lot of reasons that it kind of broke down. Being in France, we weren't quarantining. We weren't stuck together or anything like that. We were there just kind of living life. But you know, I was taking temporary jobs, and I just kind of realized throughout taking those jobs that I was happier on my own for a lot of reasons. Padgett flirts with everybody, that's the problem. It's just not me. Sierra admitted that the relationship was ill-fated. It started when she was just 18 years old, and she's never been the marrying type. As for Paget, he found love again and got engaged to Johanna Mills in August 2022. 
Natasha and David had already worked together before their season 7 debut on Below Deck Mediterranean. Emotions ran high all season, as David tiptoed around the fact that the two had hooked up on their previous yacht. While the chef was ready to tell the truth, Natasha wanted to hide their previous bling. Word eventually got out and blew up so badly that David had to move out of the cabin he shared with the chief stew. It got even worse when Tequila fueled his anger about Natasha getting back with her ex, the one she had previously cheated on when she hooked up with the chef. The pair managed to finish out the season, but David isn't convinced that Natasha will ditch her M.O. He told Andy Cohen, she obviously likes toxic relationships. Natasha moved on to her singer-songwriter boyfriend, Max Landry, sharing a written statement that read, I'm super happy, and I'm fortunate enough to have met my lifelong soulmate and partner this year. And I just want to say that I feel so blessed for the opportunity and experience this has all given me, and I wish everyone there the best for the future to come. As for David, he claimed to be single as of November 2022. Storm certainly met his match in Natalia on Season 7 of Below Deck Mediterranean. The pair quickly fell head over heels for each other, and it wasn't long before the bosun was buying jewelry for the stew and joking about getting her name tattooed. Storm noted at the reunion, Natalia provided me an escape to all the difficulties and the pressures and the anxiety that I had for the season." Natalia claimed their relationship didn't work because the two lovers were in different places in life, but she admitted, "...I think if we were worked on a yacht together still, I think we would have a relationship." Explaining that they were headed in separate directions after the season, Storm to South Africa and Natalia to Australia, she shared, "...it most likely wasn't going to work due to time and place." we were going to be." Storm found love again with a new girlfriend, Chief Stu Chloe Griffin, who he frequently posts about on Instagram. Though they didn't appear on the same season of the show, Wes and Gabriella found each other after their seasons wrapped. Wes appeared on season 9 of Below Deck, where he had his sights set on Stu Jessica Albert. Gabriella was involved in her own fling with good old Gary during season 3 of Below Deck Sailing Yacht, but that also fizzled out fast. Gabriella fell in love with Wes in St. Thomas, sharing with showbiz cheat sheet at the time, "...I now work on a sailboat and I'm the first mate on Wes's boat. He's teaching me everything about sailing, and it's hard. I've been so tired. I feel like such a wuss. It's the physical labor of being out in the sun and the salt air all day, every day, learning a bunch." Their relationship went from business to pleasure later that year, when Gabby revealed her relationship status in April of 2022, telling the Gangplank Report podcast, "...Wes and I are dating. We've been dating for a couple of months. I don't think I've had a boyfriend quite as kind and patient and loving as Wes." Brian and Courtney met on Season 7 of Below Deck in Thailand, where their roller coaster romance was fueled by many drunken nights out. But when Brian once asked Courtney about their status, texting about just having fun in the middle of a workday, the timing was a total disaster. While they ended things on a good note, their relationship didn't make landfall, and the two yachties chalked it up to a fleeting boat romance. Brian shared on the after show, and I'm sure she can agree that we are two very different people. To make a long-distance, serious relationship work, it would be near impossible." Courtney claimed that when she offered to continue the fun after cameras wrapped, Brian had other plans. She said, "...he preferred to spend time with the boys, the boys, which is his prerogative, but that's not what I look for in a partner." Hannah and Conrad's dramatic relationship played out in Season 3 of Below Deck Mediterranean. The pair were constantly dodging Captain Sandy with their flirty interactions, but while Conrad fell for Hannah when she let her softer side show, ultimately their differing personalities would be their downfall. Stop giving me these ultimatums! Tensions reached an all-time high after Hannah asked the deckhand if it would bother him if she went to visit a friend on his yacht after the charter season ended. Conrad answered no, but when she made a joke about it, Conrad didn't take too kindly to Hannah trying to stir up some jealousy. As long as I don't f you, even if he wants to f me, then it wouldn't bother you. What? The two eventually ended their fling over a pack of cigarettes. Conrad asked Hannah to give him the 50 euro she owed him for the cigarettes, and she responded by throwing it at his feet. Conrad told the cider, "...in my eyes, if you owe someone money, you owe them money, no matter if you're girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. Everything is equal and should be split." She had a different opinion on that one. Hannah says she doesn't keep in touch with Conrad, telling Andy Cohen that she hadn't spoken to him since they wrapped filming. "...so nothing happened after the reunion." "...no." "...no, no." Kate Chastain and Ben Robinson have been longtime friends, and sometimes lovers, during their time on Below Deck. The duo fueled romance rumors between season 2 and season 3 when Ben arrived as the replacement chef, and sparks started to fly. Ben revealed on the show, "...we know each other much better on a more personal level." "...we hooked up a few times." And as Kate told Seconds Do Amy, "...Ben and I are like cheesecake. 
It's really decadent, it's delicious. You can't eat it every day. While they're masters at keeping fans guessing about their relationship status, the duo has always maintained their good friends. Kate says the chef still holds a special place in her heart, telling Andy Cohen, My favorite is probably Ben, and that might be because we had sex.